The thing that shifted my perspective the most from when I was 14 and thought Postal 2 was hilarious and now happened when I was 19 and something happened to me that could have been lifted straight out of the game like Postal 2. It was also the only time in my life that I actually strongly felt like killing another person. First car I ever bought was a 1978 Lincoln Continental. Beautiful, elegant, enormous machine. I drove it on a 5,000 mile, two week road trip from San Diego to Boston. It was the most prized possession of my entire life up to that point. And, long story short, it gets stolen. At 5 a.m., I get a call. Oh, this is the Escondido Police Department. Is this Noah? We found your car! So I breathe a sigh of relief, and then he continues. I'm sorry, but by the time officers arrived on the scene, your vehicle was completely engulfed in flames. Like, not just a little engulfed in flames, not something that would buff out, but completely fucking engulfed in flames. It doesn't really get much more final than that. So I have to go to the impound lot that they towed its carcass to, and that's when things get way worse. They demand proof of ownership for the car, and they would charge me $280 a day in fees until I provide the proof and pay them the full amount I owe them. Over $800 by their account for the tow and a single day's storage. For having my car stolen. I explained that all the paperwork was in the glove box of the Lincoln, and then the woman. This awful woman, whose awful face is seared into my memory for all time, looks at me, smacks her chewing gum, and says, That's gonna be a pretty big problem for you, cause that thing's a crispy critter. It took me a minute to process what she had said, that she had just added a literal insult to injury, and when I had processed it, it was obvious. She was gonna have to die. She would have to. There would be no other fucking way. And that's when I realized that impound lots don't have bulletproof glass because of robberies. They have it because of what they do to people, and how angry it makes those people in turn. If that bulletproof glass hadn't been there, I would have done something I regretted, probably involving her face and a nearby stapler. Ultimately, I had to spend four hours on the phone with the impound lot's corporate office, who eventually told me what papers to get from the DMV to transfer ownership of the carcass to them, and for this, I would only be charged $300. It was, the man said, very generous. I called the cop who took my statement. He said that if I had had better insurance, the insurance would have paid, but what happened to me was totally legal except for the initial theft. On their end, they had no leads and would not be spending time looking into the matter. It was a powerful and savage education. The world really doesn't care. The more vulnerable you are, the harder you get hit. I never really knew that until I was vulnerable myself, living in a shitty neighborhood with the cheapest possible car insurance. Here's the lesson I learned. There are people in the world suffering injustices both small and large that I could never even begin to guess at. So maybe I should stop talking so much shit and stop being so skeptical of other people's struggles. The whole experience shocked me into seeing outside myself, how I had been preyed on not because of who I was, but because I was positioned in the system in a way that made me open to that kind of predation. It wasn't lost on me that stealing a car, joyriding around all night, and then setting it on fire was something I had done over and over and over again in games. Except now it had really happened, happened to me, and I learned that little joy comes out of a joyride.